And now I will show you guys how I will solve this right here. It's actually a pretty cool equation. So here we go. This right here is my solution. And the deal is that if you look at the original equation right here, we have sine and cosine being both. And you can try to solve for what x is in all that, but we don't have to. And the truth is, if you know sine plus cosine is equal to 1 over 5, and the input is in between of 0 and pi, you can actually find out what sine is and what cosine is individually. So I will actually do that for you guys first. And then, of course, I just have to divide them, and that's the third person. Sine is on the top. Yeah, anyway, so here we go. In order for me to do all that, I will have to look at this equation in terms of just sine x or cosine x, and it's up to your choice, right? But let me just change the cosine to sine. And to do that, I will have to put down, we know that, Cosine square x is equal to 1 minus sine square x. And I will just have to take the square roots on both sides. To do that, don't forget, you include the plus or minus on the right-hand side. So I will just plug in this right here for that. And notice that you should technically still put the plus or minus, but let me tell you, it won't matter later on. But anyway, right here we have sine x. And then for the cosine x, I will put this down. Namely, we write down plus or minus, square root of 1 minus sine square x. And then on the right-hand side, we have to have 1 over 5, like that. And now, this is an equation with a square root. So a good idea is that let's isolate the square root part and then square both sides. Well, in that case, I will just have to minus the sine x on both sides, and we get the plus or minus square root of 1 minus sine square x, this being equal to 1 over 5 minus sine x, like this. And then I will just square both sides, right here and right here. As you can see, when you have the plus or minus, you square that, it's just going to be positive 1 anyway, so that's why the plus or minus didn't matter. And the square and the square root, of course, they will cancel nicely, so on the left-hand side, you will just have 1 minus sine square x, and then on the right-hand side, we will just expand this. I will have to do the first term square, namely 1 over 25, and then minus 2 times this and that, so we have 2 over 5 times sine x. And the last part is, we'll just add this thing square, which is sine square x, like this. So that's pretty good. And now, this is actually a quadratic equation in terms of sine x. So, let's put everything on one side and make the other side zero. I will just put this to the other side. So I will just say, let's add a sine square x like this. Let me just write it down better for you guys. We add a sine square x, sine square x, and then we will have to minus one on both sides. So that's good. And then I will write this term first, right? This down first. So of course, this plus that, we have two of them. So that's two sine square x. And then this term is, of course, stays the same, minus 2 over 5 sine x. And then 1 over 25 minus 25 over 25, we get minus 24 over 25 from there, and this is equal to 0. And I will show you guys how I factor this quadratic expression in terms of sine x. So everything's in the nice order. I will do what I call the tic-tac-toe method for factoring. And now, to do that, I will have to ask myself, what times 4 will give me 2 sine square x? And then the choice is pretty much just 2 sine x times sine x. That's pretty good, right? And I will come here and ask myself, what times 1 will give me negative 24 over 25? And the small trick is that you see that the middle term, you have the denominator 5. So I'm pretty confident that right here, we should have something over 5 and then something over 5, right? It can still be uh, other possibility, but you know, this question is set up nicely, so it shouldn't be too crazy. Hmm, and let's see. What should go on the top, though? What times will give us negative 24? Well, we can do a lot of choices, right? 3 and 8, and one of them being negative, 2 and 12, one of them being negative, and all that. But let me tell you the correct combination is that we will do 6 and 4, one of them being negative, and this is how. I will put 6 down right here, and 4 right here, and I will make the 4 negative. So, 6 over 5 times negative 4 over 5, of course, we still end up with negative 24 over 25, so that's good. And then to continue, I will show you this actually works. I will take this times that. 
So you see, 2 times negative 4 over 5 is just negative 8 over 5, and then we have the sine x. And then I will take this times that, this is going to give me positive 6 over 5, and of course we still have the sine x term, right, right there. In the middle, we have the sine x term. If you look at the coefficients, negative 8 over 5 plus 6 over 5, we get negative 2 over 5. So this right here, it checks, right? So that's how you can factor a trinomial uh, in this kind of situation, a quadratic trinomial, even though you have the sine x as the input doesn't really matter that much. And you have to remember that, don't mess up on here, even though you got the correct combination, but don't mess up. Because the factoring is actually this. You cross multiply these to check, but you write down 2x, I mean 2 sine x, plus 6 over 5 as the first factor, right? So let me write that down for you guys. 2 sine x plus 6 over 5, and then the other factor is this and that. So write down sine x minus 4 over 5, and this is still equal to 0, of course, right? So that's good, and then we'll just continue. Of course, we make the first factor equal to 0, 2 sine x plus 6 over 5 equals 0, and the other one, sine x minus 4 over 5 equal to 0. And now check this out. We know the input x is in between of 0 and pi. This means sine will have to be positive, because again, you are on the first, well, you're on the upper half, right? The first and you're in the first and then also the second quadrant. So sine will be positive. This right here will give you a negative sine value, right? And then right here, I'll just have to solve this. So I now will use this. Right, we, 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 uh, we know sine x equals 4 over 5, like that. So this right here is what we need to use. And then based on that, as I told you, you know exactly what sine is. Whenever you do, you can also figure its best friend. Very easy in this case. You can of course use this again, but let's use the original. So I will put this down back there. We know that. Here we have 4 over 5 plus cosine x equals 1 over 5, minus 4 over 5 on both sides. This will tell us cosine x equals negative 3 over 5. See, I told you, whenever you know sine, you also know its best friend. And now let's find the third person. And in the end, we see that tangent x, of course, this is just nicely equal to sine x over cosine x. And of course, on the top we have positive 4 over 5, and on the bottom we have negative 3 over 5. And you can multiply the top and bottom by 5 to cancel out the 5, and you write down the 5 nicely here. In the end, you end up with negative 4 over 3.